Hey guys and welcome to the VFX vlog where you get to ask me filmmaking and visual effects related questions and I will try my best to answer them. In the first part of this vlog I want to talk a little bit about how to judge your skill level of After Effects and also how to get the most out of these difficulty meters that I've been using more and more in my recent tutorials to make it easier for you to identify the tutorials that are right for you. In the second part I'm going to talk a little bit more about day to night conversion especially in regards to my recently released fireworks compositing tutorial. The one thing I didn't really show you in that tutorial was how to add all of the lights into the buildings in the background of the scene. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. First off, let's talk skill levels. In my recent tutorials, I've always been introducing these difficulty meters which show you whether the tutorial is meant for basic, intermediate or advanced skill levels. Now of course in order to use these meters you kind of need to have a good feel for where your skill level is at and I want to give you a rough guide for what you can use to identify whether the tutorials are right for you. For my basic tutorials I'm generally assuming that you have little to no knowledge at all in using After Effects. That means that when I'm explaining things I will explain things like common menu options, common mistakes that can happen, where to find your commands, shortcut keys and all sorts of other little useful tips just to get you started using the software. You should be able to just jump into these tutorials and follow along even if you've never used After Effects before. For my intermediate tutorials I will basically assume that you've watched all of my basic ones so I will assume that you know about masks, track mats, adjustment layers, pre-composing things, um, simple expressions. I will assume that you kind of know how to duplicate layers and all the shortcut keys and how to work with the basic interface of After Effects. If you're watching an intermediate tutorial and you feel like I'm going too fast and I'm skipping things and not explaining things right maybe just jump back to some of the basic ones just to revise a few of the basic concepts of After Effects. For my advanced tutorials I will generally assume that you have a pretty strong understanding of After Effects. I generally won't cover things like shortcut keys or how to pre-compose layers or why we're going to use a track mat. I'm going to assume that you know all of those things just so that we can keep the tutorial moving fast. Again if it goes a bit too fast for you just maybe drop back down to some intermediate tutorials and just work through a few of those before you come back to the advanced ones. As for my expert tutorials well there are none yet but for me that is mainly because I don't feel that I personally am at an expert level. I think I'm quite comfortable at an advanced level. I'm starting to do more tracking things and 3D integration effects and I do want to push my boundaries this year. Hopefully get to an expert level and start making tutorials that I think could qualify as expert skill. And now for the After Effects part of this vlog. In my last tutorial, the fireworks compositing tutorial, I actually converted one of the scenes from a day shot to a night scene but I kind of didn't explain how I added all of the little lights onto the buildings in the background. Now the lights actually add a lot to the feeling of it being a night scene and I'm going to jump into After Effects and show you how easy it is to add those little lights. So here's the final composition that we actually created in the fireworks compositing tutorial. So you can see the fireworks and the lighting that we set up and it's all nicely tracked into the scene. The one thing we did not do is we did not set up any lights in the background in any of the buildings and therefore the footage kind of does look flat. It doesn't quite convey this nighttime feel that I would like it to convey. But it is very easy to add the lights onto the buildings in the background. It just happens to be rather tedious but you'll see why in a moment. Now we already have a solid setup that tracks this footage which we used for the sky mat and we can just reuse that for the building lighting. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate my city mat. It's going to drag that to the top and I'm going to change the color to something yellow because I do want nice warm city light. Uh, maybe a bit less saturated. Yep that should do. And then of course because it still has the mask from the sky mat on it we don't really want that. I actually want to delete that so I'm just going to open up the masks, select all the masks and delete them. Then next thing I want to do is I want to actually enable the visibility on this layer. Yep that is probably a little bit too strong so let's lower the opacity of that a little bit just so we can see what is going on. And the other thing I will do is I will also set the blend mode to additive. So I'm going to take one of the buildings, let's say we want to add some lights into this big cube looking building right here. So I'm just going to zoom in as closely as I can and I'm going to select the pen tool and I'm going to draw a little mask just over the window here. Zoom out again, uh, it's way too dark, let's increase the opacity. What's really cool about this is that because we used a mat that is already 3D and positioned in the scene, if we scrub through the footage that will be properly tracked onto the clip as the camera pans around and um, so it will follow the window nicely. The next thing I actually did is I applied a small glow effect just to kind of give it a bit more of that city light shine feeling. Um, again this is kind of up to you how strongly you want this to look. I don't want to overdo it. Just like a little bit of glow on top of it just so 
the shine reaches out of the window a little bit now. I think it's a bit too strong. Let's lower it a little, maybe around 30%. And that's the first window. So now it really is just up to you to paint every single window that you want to have light with a mask. And this is exactly where it becomes tedious because this can take a while. And I think I spent probably an hour or two painting a hell of a lot of masks onto all these buildings. Also, once I have a lot of masks in my composition and on my layer, it does tend to get slow. So after I've done a bit chunk, I actually do like to pre-compose them and kind of package them away because it does take up a lot of time on the CPU to calculate all of these masks. And that's the basic technique. You just go through your scene and you add the lights where you want to. Um, one tip on the masks, and I actually do like to do that a little bit. I tend to vary the mask opacity a little bit just so that all windows aren't the same strength in terms of the lighting. Kind of looks a bit more natural that way. And that's how you set up your city lights in the background. Let me quickly show you the actual final composition for the intro of my fireworks tutorial. Uh, I've actually got the link composition here. So the first part of the intro. This is the actual composition I used for the first part of my fireworks tutorial. And you see all the city lights. I've actually pre-composed them into this layer here. And if we jump into that, you can see a hell of a lot of solid setup in each of these solids. If I select them, you can see has a lot of masks on them. I think there's probably around 200 masks or something. In this shot, all of these little bits and pieces, each one of these is an individual mask, especially this building here, I think was a bit, that was really crazy to do. It just took me a long time to just paint that out. But yeah, that's all it is. It's just masks on a layer that is tracked to the footage, which will then overlay your base footage and give you a nice, cool city lighting effect. And that's all we're going to cover for today. I really hope you enjoyed this vlog. As always, if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them in the section below. Please remember to subscribe, hit that like button and share the video around. It really helps out a lot. And if you're hungry for more, you can also find and follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Until next time, I will see you later.